I am shooting down to the unit because the steel delivery man has jumped the gun and he's got there before I have. Uh, I was waiting for Gemma to drop the kids off at school so I could bring her with me to help me unload this, but it's half past eight and he's sat outside. So, straight down, get him unloaded. My goodness, that was a mad dash. But we've got it off. The big tube's underneath me, and the sheets are over there. I'm gonna bring them in. I'm a little bit warm now. Shiny forehead. So this is 1,300 quid worth of steel, folks. We've got some big pipe there for legs. Some one inch uh, hygienic for outlets and team. Some flat bar to help make a cooling jacket, which might not be going on straight away, but it was cheap enough, that bit. And then over here, we've got the sheets of two by one, which are gonna form the base and the lid. And then behind we have the big sheets of 1250 by two and a half meters. And they're gonna form the tank, so you can get a feel for how tall the tanks are going to be, can't you, straight away. I probably don't need a conical base. Picking up the lady. <laughs> and then I'm gonna treat myself to a sausage, egg and bacon butty. I haven't had one of these for maybe November. Not one that I bought. Anyway, I've made one at home, don't get me wrong. Can't go that long with that one. So quick butty on the way down to the shop. And we gotta get our roll on. Oh. Are you a bit nippy, me dog? Actually, not too bad. My feet are a bit cold. Good. Let's go and get a nice sandwich. I'm having a sandwich. Oh, yeah. A sandwich. Nom, 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 Right, I never managed to get any wire rope in time, but I've put the... I've just put some... You can hear that works. I've just put some normal rope up for the emergency brake. Reset the machine. So we're going to give it a quick roll. Face value, she looks like a cylinder. Couple of issues that we've had. One is, it overbends slightly on the corners if I look from this angle. You see that? Everything else is pretty good, but it just overbent on the corners. And I think that's due to it riding up just on this here. You can see it's shiny where it caught. I think that's what bent it. Same on that side, it sort of took the paint off just there. But the rollers coped with this easy. I think they'd roll twice as thick as this, don't you? Yeah. It's really just pissed through it, not a problem. It's got a nice radius all the way around the body of it, and it's just where we started and stopped. But what I did notice is because it's overbent, there is no obvious flat spot, which means when I do get these, I'll just bend them about and bash them about a bit, square them up. When I do get them squared up, they should meet nicely on the scene. Right, we're going for the second roll. So we've pushed the steel into the rollers and clamped them up tight. And then what you do, you roll your back roller up halfway so you can whack the steel against the back roller to square it. Then we know that that steel is 90 degrees to the perpendicular. Is that the correct terminology? I'm making it up. So now we're pinched tight on there. I will lift this roller, take this roller back down and allow the steel to come through and we'll roll one way and then back again hopefully put in the right the right curve onto her that was one roll what we got, we, see, we seem to be just getting this belly on the tank look you see that little belly? Because it tends to overroll the top corners, the top and bottom corners. But I think the, the weld will get rid of that once we tack up and just open that back up. Oh, cool. <laughs> Four of them. Uh, so we've got one more to do. I think I nailed that though, don't you? Yeah, that's good. 1231. 1231, folks, it's dinner time. 
We got here at what? Half ten or eleven? Half ten. Half ten. One, two, three, four, five. What do you think? We're officially now a fabrication shop. <laughs> Woohoo! First one tacked up. So I've been very, very generous with the tacks. I've run all the way down. And on the other side, you can see it's come through. It's not too bad, actually. There's no sugar in. Uh, before I weld it though, I'm gonna weld it from the inside out, I think. But I want to get a piece of extruded aluminium to clamp to the other side to just back it off. So I don't get any sugar in it on the other side. At first I started tacking with 40 amps and just making a little puddle. Then I realized what I saw on welding tips and tricks the other week. So I just whacked the welder up to 250 amps and just pounded the foot pedal, just a quick blast. And it made these lovely, shiny, nice, clean tacks. There's just a little crater in the middle of them, but that'll disappear, obviously, when I weld over them. But very, very nice. And I just ground these two out here because it wasn't flush when I ran my finger over it, but I just reset them a little bit. There's a slight little ridge there. But here, you know, there's not even a thaw in that. Beautiful. Not to be baffled, and in order to be able to continue with the welding, I've got this old scaffolding bar, which is aluminium, which I'm, I just use for like moving things around as a lever. But I was just thinking, why don't I chop the ends off and run this through the roller, and maybe flatten it out, and I can use that to back onto the onto the inside of the weld. Right, we've got the aluminium section. That's half of a scaffold tube. It really is quite light, so I'm going to see if we can roll it flat with this. It's about two mil thick, so with it being alley, this should absolutely uh, make short work of it. weld. Well I never expected that. So snap this. Still a good section though isn't it? If I can get this to straighten up. say two minutes ago that was a round piece of scaffolding pipe. That should be alright for backing against here. It's going to be difficult to get it to contact, which is why I've kept this section. Right, so I've rolled that section as flat as I can pretty much get it on, the, on that roller, because it's designed to make a cylinder of course. Um, but to clamp this onto the back of the workpiece, I've kept this section half round, so that has a bit more rigidity to it. And then I can just pop that there and clamp the half round section and it should press it all flat against the stainless. And then this alley should make for a good backing material because it's already made my hands freezing cold. Right, Gemma's got to go and pick the kids up soon. I'm gonna go with her because I wanna pick up, uh, I wanna meet Frenchie tonight. He's, uh, it's coming down at five o'clock, so I'm coming down early. But I want to get this one tacked up before I do. So this is a rush job. Never a good idea. Bloody 
camera woman just stood there not helping. Only joking. Let me get this out. One of the things that takes the most amount of time sometimes with this kind of stuff, and I'm learning fast, is peeling this off. Right, you can see it's just flat spotted here. I think that'll come out on the roller, but I've got to go with Joan to pick the kids up. But we managed to save these tacks down here. I had one nasty little blowout there because it wasn't fitted up right, but I will sort that when I come to welding. I'm gonna turn everything off and get going. We've come home to exciting deliveries. That's right folks, it doesn't get any better than this. Cha-ching! You know the uh, pressure dial, pressure gauge that I ordered for the compressor? And I thought it needs to come with a quarter inch fitting. Well it did! I needed a freaking eighth of an inch fitting, didn't I? Eighth of an inch fitting, Jesus Christ. It's alright honey, I can see you eating the bolognese. So talking about fittings, well, I've not really managed to fit in the rest of the evening. So I've been down to Beer Ed's and to the Brew Shed with our Lord and Saviour, Mr. David French, the North Knox Camera Chairman, and quite a few other people. And I had a cracking night, but I'm really saving myself for tomorrow where we're going to go into the unit and weld up these tanks. So I will see you.